She rushes promise to stop the boats. The Channel crisis continues to spiral out of control. There's a surprise. The number of crossings hit a new record high over the weekend, with 872 of them crossing in just one day. So the big question, can the Tories turn the tide on this crisis? We talk about it almost every night because it is central. John and me to discuss this, good friend of mine, Conservative MP, Jonathan Gullis. JG, how are you, my friend? It's good to see you, Jeremy. How are you keeping? I'm good, my friend. You're not going to like this, but before I talk about that, can we talk about concrete? That is no look for an education secretary, is it? Let's be perfectly honest. Slap down tonight by number 10. Uh, the video was bizarre. Uh, being caught off camera can happen. We've talked on this show already that this has been going on for years. How is it, Jonathan Gullis, that Conservatives and Labour governments over 60 years have allowed this to happen? This is disgraceful for the children of our country, isn't it? Well, look, first of all, I think it was entirely appropriate for Gillian to formally apologise for the words that she used. Uh, they were totally unacceptable, they were inappropriate, and they were uh, not becoming of a Secretary of State for education. And with, reg re with regards to RAP, as it's uh, obviously commonly known, uh, it's fair to say that this has been far from the government's finest hour when it comes to handling media expectations, but also actually explaining what the issue is. You are correct in saying this is something that's been on in trays of governments, of not just the Conservatives, but also the Labour Party before, who, in fact, despite having three warnings throughout the last Labour government, didn't do a single thing. And their Building Schools for the Future programme didn't once, once mention in the guidance that was issued for them about replacing or replicating or repairing any work that was necessary regarding to RAC. Uh, obviously, pupils, parents, teachers, support staff are rightly concerned, confused. And I think that the Secretary of State today did in the chamber at least spell out the facts uh, which obviously now need to be uh, pushed down the airwaves as much as possible to give reassurances to uh, to many places that, for example, in Stoke-on-Trent, North Kids, Graham Talk, there is no schools that have RAC present. There is one that replied on the survey saying they suspect they might have it. There will be a survey done hopefully within the next two weeks to verify that. But when those surveys have been conducted, around two-thirds have come back to find that they haven't got any but rat But, Jonathan, 700,000 school children who've already suffered, and you, from your educational background, I know you'll understand this, who've already suffered the appalling impact of the pandemic on their education, this is like a lost generation might be excluded from school again. I'm not saying it's all on Dishy Rish's doorstep, but the fact is it is an appalling look. And another example where we should, and I can never get the word, depolit I can't say it. We should get round a table and sort this out, whatever side you are on, depolitize, I can't say the word. Do you know what I'm trying to say? No. I really no, do. The, the, you're totally right. The future of our young people comes before anything else. Yeah. For leveling up to mean anything, education has to be delivered. Mm. Get more kids getting better grades, going on to university or into apprenticeships, degree apprenticeships, further education. But that is what we desperately need. That is what's going to transform the lives of the people that I serve in Stoke-on-Trent North, Kids Grove and getting them the education that they deserve. So you are right. And I think the Secretary of State did say that she's reached out to ministers in Wales and Scotland and Northern Ireland to jointly work, jointly share expertise to find ways that these issues can be solved. Because, of course, Wales today themselves have closed two schools, having found... Uh, rack there once they've started the survey. I don't think that I don't think that any I don't think that any politician, Jonathan, who's been associated with anything to do with education the last sixty years can have anything but 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 uh, people will just disrespect. Not that nobody's covered themselves in glory. My friend, can we move on? Um, your new leader uh, made a point of standing up when he was elected. His five points. This is what the next election's all about. Uh, yesterday, um, interestingly. Uh, 872, Saturday, actually, 872 migrants in 15 small boats still arriving in the United Kingdom. I mean, I've got to a point on this show where I don't think that any politician has a plan that can work, and I believe it's got to a point where they just throw out, we're going to stop the small boats. It's not working, is it, Jonathan? Not at all. Well, first of all, Jeremy, I'm going to say something that might rile you, but it's not designed to do that, is that progress, albeit very slowly, is being made. In fact, if you look at the numbers for the year to date compared to 2022, we're actually down around 20%. In fact, the Home Office themselves have downgraded their forecast of 80,000 down to around 45,000. Now, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm hardly known to be a wolf around this issue. That is 45,000, way too many of people who have illegally entered this country and chosen to come over on a small bo boat and endanger their life unnecessarily when they're in safe mainland France. But it is also appropriate to think that the work that has been done is having some small impact. But you are correct in saying that until the public see a flight to Rwanda 
until they see that, there is going to be a lot of, lot of confidence in the balance of the British public in whether or not this government will deliver. I believe it will. I believe it will win the Supreme Court. We must be doing deals with other safe third countries. We must be looking at alternative accommodation rather than hotels. But most importantly, we also then need to make sure that the backlog is processed. And instead of accepting seven in 10, as we currently are, that we get down to numbers similar to France, of accepting a maximum around two in ten. You know, you know what, JG, and I want, I want you to stay there because I want to bring the panel in. To me, there seems to be every subject we talk about, we, we need to almost start afresh. If I can bring you guys back in, we talk about a lack of planning. Um, Frankie, I know you have a different view to me about the, the migrant crisis, and I would nail again that I believe that we should do whatever we can, and I mean that, and I will point to what happened with Ukraine. But I will also, every night I sit here, say to you repeatedly that the good people of this country who now can't even take their kids to school, who can't get a dental appointment or a doctor's appointment, they can't get anything, they are, as Jonathan Gullis said, they need to see something happening. And we can sit here and talk about home office needs to be improved, processing systems. Nothing seems to happen. And I just believe that any politician who says they can stop the boats is lying to the British people because they can't right now, can they? Well, no, of course they can't stop the boats because it's a crisis that partially the Conservative Party has put itself in, which is not by having no safe routes. Most of the ways that people will try and claim asylum or move here to be migrants, whether that's legal or illegal, the only way they can get here is on a small boat. So if they wanted to seriously stop the small boats crisis and stop having that massive impact and strain on public services around the coast, they would simply open some safe JJ, routes. JJ, respond, my friend. Well, look, Frankie's advocating for obviously open borders, mass migration and free movement. I, said? Essentially I don't to the rest remember of the world saying that. By making that <laughs> comment, because what Frankie's saying is this idea that we should just somehow throw our arms open to the world and just allow people to come over, even though they've travelled through many safe man mainland European countries, is utterly bizarre. But the fact is that these people are in France. They have no need to come over to this country. France is a UN member, in fact, UN founder, NATO member, nuclear power, a country as well. The idea that they, some, these people are going to be mal, uh, mistreated is complete nonsense. People are asylum shopping, so you will use the words of the Labour MP for Berry South. And ultimately, what we need to see is a clamping down on the abuse of our asylum system when we've already taken half a million people since 2015. Hong Kong, Ukraine, Afghanistan, Syria. So food. let's get real with the British public ben, here. Hold on a second, JG Benedict. I mean, the, the, also, the first thing that you have to say is how, who is it that's actually running the small boats? It's not these migrants are just sort of blowing them up themselves. It's criminal organisations. You can make a real dent in that by arresting people because they operate in France and we don't have jurisdiction over their territory, but they also operate in the UK. But unfortunately, that will mean a massive increase in policing resources, which I don't think is necessarily very forthcoming. It's a very difficult thing to do because these are the same people that run the drug rings into this country. Uh, that's the first thing that has to be said. They always talk about Rwanda as being this big, great example of what we need to do. The majority of people who came, the largest single group that came last year, were from Albania. As far as I'm aware, Albania has airports and we have diplomatic relations with it. They all broke the law when they came in. They have no right to be here. You can just put them on a plane to Albania. The largest group that's coming in now is people from India. We're trying to sign a trade deal with India. Why do you have to put those people on a plane to Rwanda? The Rwandans don't want them, really. They want people from Afghanistan. But there are plenty of people with justified reasons for coming from Jonathan, Afghanistan. very quickly, before Rebecca jumps in, what would you say to what Benedict said, my friend? Well, I totally agree that they, we've got the Albania deal. That's obviously seen a 90% reduction in the people coming from that country. But we see now India and Turkey. We saw the Minister of Immigration go to Turkey, but didn't actually come back with a returns agreement, which is very frustrating. But you're right, I would test out what the situation. I'd put these people on the plane, and I'd fly them over, and I'd sit on the time. I can see what this Turkey is the thing. or you India... You don't did. need to sign a deal with these countries. What are they going to do, shoot your plane out of the sky? No, you just fly the plane over, and you say, here we come, these are your citizens, you have to take them. This idea that you have to strike a deal well, with people to deport them is for the birds. Rebecca Hudson? I mean, I think the only thing that's slowing down the boats is the weather, and I'm not sure Jonathan Gullis can take and any credit for the fact that it's just a little bit sunnier, or, you know, it was sunnier last year than it is this year, which is why the numbers are down. And I think, you know, we need to stem the problem at the source. You know, we have huge amounts of displaced, desperate people across the world. And actually, if we invested in, um, you know, these countries where there, where there is famine, where there is climate change, where they're there is not war, in France, where there is conflict, Rebecca, we have this there are not, every day. No, you're, not obli you're not obliged to, 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 to stay in the first country you get to. And also, if you don't speak French or you've got no family or community there, why... But, but why do I... Why do, help me out, Jonathan. I'm, listen, everybody on this show has a right to an opinion. Can but I this is what I don't understand. When, you always Jonathan. say 
that we, you know, they shouldn't stop at the first but country. Hear me out. Or that why why are we always the I last answer country? This. Wait, listen. Ask him now. Why was it okay then that people Ask came? Ask yourself. Fine. Why were we happy to take people from Ukraine when the first country that they went to was Poland? Why were we happy? Because we're offering a route to a country which was literally in war after being invaded. Okay, so you've nation. got war in Afghanistan, war in We've places like Eritrea. We've done that with many other countries, but You're simply... You're tying yourself in knots. Well, we're not funding any no, of the sides in Eritrea or Ethiopia or The idea that the weather, for example, the weather argument I find utterly absurd as well, because actually what I've said is for the last four years, the numbers of, numbers of people who have illegally entered the United Kingdom have doubled. This is the first time the Home Office has actually brought in around a 50% reduction on those figures, because a small part of the Prime Minister's plan is having an impact. As I say... Far too many still, but the idea that the weather is solely to uh, get the credit is absurd when actually the weather has been up and down for over the last four years as there's well. There's no so doubt, JG, reality. don't go anywhere. Uh, there's no doubt, my friends, that whatever your side, watching and listening to this tonight, whatever side of the, the argument you sit upon, this is central to the next election. And I don't care whether it's Tories, uh, Labour, what's that other party called? The Green. Liberal, yeah, the Grit, whatever. <laughs> I don't care who it is, the British people deserve some answers. And until they get answers, until they get actual planning and, and, and can see a change, and, and we add to that education. There's so much in this country that's screwed, and I think the British people deserve answers. Now, today, not just the small boats crisis that's causing headaches for the Tories. In a minute, we'll ask JG. Sir Dreary Starmer has been shaking things up at Labour HQ. Today he's announced a new shadow cabinet, and there are some major changes to his top team. Uh, I'll do my best. A previous favourite of his, Lisa Nandy, has had a fall from grace. She's been demoted to a role that nobody really knows about, Shadow Cabinet Minister for International Development. She's been replaced by our Ange Angela Rayner. Got a newly created Labour role as levelling up secretary. That'll be fun, won't it? Her against Gove in the House of Commons. Our Ange, she's proper her. Blairite, this is interesting. Hilary Benn has made a surprise comeback, Shadow Northern Ireland secretary. Uh, fellow sort of Blairite, Liz Kendall. She's back as Shadow Work and Pension Secretary, relegating poor Jonathan Ashworth to Shadow Paymaster General, whatever that means. There's also some shock promotions. Rising star, what's her name, Shabana? Shabana Mahmood. Shabana Mahmood, who has elevated the Justice Brief and the highly rated Darren Jones. I don't know if he's Welsh, I just thought I'd do it. Became Shadow Chief Secretary to the Treasury. So that, my friend, is Sakiri Drama's uh, new Shadow Cabinet. All 32 of them are these, the faces of a future government. Um... Frankie, what do you reckon? Probably, yeah. I think the Tories are doing so badly mm. that, you know, Labour would really have to really, really mess this up not to win the next election. What I would be surprised about is how long this cabinet lasts. Because what we're not taking into account is how many actual Blairites, and I mean actual ideological Blairites, have been selected mm. over the last year. Because, you know, Starmer's Lotto has a vice-like grip, and I mean vice-like on the application per, uh, process to be an MP, basically. So they've got a whole group now of ideological Blairites who are going to come in, get, I think, positions as junior ministers. They'll promote them in a couple of years. They'll do a reshuffle. And then it will seriously be Blair 2.0. Can I turn it round and I'll get you in a sec, Jonathan? Can I just bring it to you, Benedict, first? See, I, I sit here and I know I joke about Sir Dreary Starmer, but actually... The transformation that he has made to the Labour Party since Jeremy Corbyn, who don't start because you two supported, that disgraceful human being who should never, ever have got anywhere near power. Jesus, man, right? What he has done to the Labour Party is change it absolutely, hasn't he? His role when he was made leader was to detoxify the party. I don't think he can quite believe the luck he has uh, with what's happened with the Tories. I mean, everybody sort of assumed with Boris Johnson at the helm something could go wrong, but not quite this badly yeah. wrong. Uh, so I do think you have to bear in mind what he's been up against in terms of, you know, what he's had to be has gone from sky-high polling to the lowest of the low. Yeah. Nobody could have foreseen that. But absolutely, he's been very calm. He's been very cautious. Some people would say too cautious, but it has worked up yeah. to this point. Whether it's enough to sort of push him over into a large majority, it looks like it'll be a, a majority of sorts, but not huge at the moment. Whether or not he's bold enough to try something particularly curveball, he's been very cautious saying, look, there isn't quite the money for the big spending plans. What he's done, I think, actually, is done a lot to sort of placate people who are in the centre who are worried yeah. that it could be Jeremy Corbyn 2.0 spending all, all the money. And he's able to do that and upset people on the left of the party because who else are they going to vote for? That's ultimately what it comes down to. It's interesting. <laughs> it's really interesting, um, sure. uh, Rebecca. If you, a lot of people will criticise, including me, that he's a bit dreary, he's a bit... Um, today, he demoted, apparently quite brutally, Lisa Nandy, who used to be a favourite of his. Um, he kept our Ange in a job, like, that's lovely. 
Um, <laughs> Lisa Nandy, were you quite shocked about that? I mean, I think she wanted his job, didn't she? So, and I think they were they were trying to figure out what to do with her for a while. But I don't think international development is exactly a, a poor brief. I think yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's it the is. brightest and the best. But also, we really do need to restore our reputation on the world stage. Don't no, we need to spend the people on the great right, on the British not people who are struggling at the moment. What's That's the truth. And also, and oh, and Jonathan and Gullis to do that. What's Tell been them done to Lisa? What's been done to Lisa Nandy is everybody says Lisa Nandy is a great communicator, and what Keir Starmer has done is gone. Okay, if you're such a great communicator, you'll be demoted so you can do all the media rounds every morning yep. so yep. that the more important people can get on with it. So would it be fair to say that Nand goes? I'm joking. Oh, she's, she's, she's that was been, rubbish. Uh, Jonathan, it. are you scared of this new look Labour shadow cabinet? Is it going to sweep to power, my friend? Look at his face. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm not, because what Keir Starmer has done is basically shuffle around the same people, but just into different jobs. And we've got Shabana Mahmood, as you say, who actually co-signed a letter demanding and campaigning for flights to be grounded with foreign national offenders who are due to go back to Jamaica, one of whom actually went on to commit murder. So, you know, at the end of the day, I don't think that's a great endorsement for the Shadow Justice Secretary. But David Lammy, who God only knows Labour HQ will be trying to hide away during a general election, uh, certainly for all the gaps he'll uh, ultimately go on to make. There's no, there's no array of talent. I will say one person, though, I do think is very talented. And I do actually like quite a lot. Darren Jones, I think he's a yeah. very good appointment. I've been on the Business and Trade Select Committee with him now as a member of that committee. I think he, uh, I think Pat McFadden uh, was a shock for me moving to the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster role. But because uh, I thought him and Rachel Rees made quite a good duo. But it certainly does show that Blairites are back in power. And as uh, David Linden, the SNP MP, joked earlier, does this mean that there'll be another evasion of Iraq coming soon with all the Blair rights that are filling? Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> listen, JG, you're a legend, my friend. Thank you. The best to everybody in Stoke on Trent. Did you laugh, Frankie? Did you laugh? <laughs> Only at the idea that I think the next time we'll see him after the election, he'll be former MP Jonathan Gullis. The Ooh. polling is not Ooh. in that seat. Wow. Bring him back. We'll, we'll, well Jonathan, the next it. time you see this show, <laughs> the next time you see this show, she'll be the former contributor, <laughs> Frankie Bridge, the leash. Outrageous comment. Thank you for now. Right next on JK Live.